Welcome back to another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I am your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So, uh, I was planning on, uh, doing another one of those Hudson Soft Nintendo games for the, for the PC for this episode. However, I was, ch- I was chatting with my good friend, Pepsi, the other day, or it was like the day before yesterday, and well... I was telling them about um, the game that you're seeing right now. Um, this is Sheriff, an old 1979 arcade game made by Nintendo. It's actually a very unique game. And well, I was telling Pepsi about this game and how awesome it is, and then the thought came to me, maybe I should do this game for the next episode of Andrew Plays. And well, Pepsi was like, Yes, you should definitely do it. And so, I am doing it. So, Pepsi, this one is for you. So, uh, basically, pe- uh, Sheriff, it's, uh, it's a Western-style game, but it's also a shooter. And it's kind of like a predecessor to uh, um, Robotron 2084, but it has the vo- has kind of has that Space Invaders vibe in the way that the game looks and the way it works and based on the pacing of the game so yeah but this is a very unique but also very underrated game that I recommend to anyone if they can ever find some way of playing it I've never seen an actual arcade machine of Sheriff before mostly because it's very rare but that's why we have emulators, like MAME, which is what I'm using to capture this. So, that's how we're going to be playing the game today, and well, Sheriff is actually a very unique game, because it actually used a control setup where, I'm trying to remember this correctly, there was a joystick, and a button, and there was also this little uh, dial, it was like something you find on an oven, like you twisted it around in order to lock, to uh, lock the position of where you would fire and then you hit the button to fire and well it was very strange but it kind of worked unfortunately I do not we can't replicate that very well with any controllers we have so I've mapped the controllers I mean the control sorry the control to work with this Xbox One controller where the left stick will move my my character and the right stick will aim and the uh, right trigger will uh, fire the gun at my enemies to destroy them and obliterate them from the face of the earth or something. So, yeah, it's a very interesting game and we're going to give it a shot here. So, let's get started. Oh, wait. (laughs) Sorry, I must have turned off the sound. Let me, uh... Let me just... Let me just uh, reset this. There we go. Sorry about that, a little technical difficulty, but we'll get by. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Having a little problem there. All right. So you got this little dude. You move around and you shoot the guys shooting at you. And you're in a clo- you're in some sort of closed arena. So cool thing is you can shoot diagonally, so it's easier to kill them. Apparently, I think uh, Nintendo actually made an updated version of the game called Sheriff 2. It only al- it got rid of the du- the uh, kitchen dial, made it easier to to shoot, but they also removed the eight way directional, making the game harder. So you can only shoot four ways. But this is the original version with all all eight directions of shooting. 
thankfully we have better controllers nowadays to map the controls to better suit our needs. So it's more like Robotron, which is an, also an amazing game. This is like a precursor to that, a predecessor. Like an earlier build of it. Baba, bada boom. There's the maiden. Stage two. So we got. I love how like the music is like just keeps getting up faster. It's pretty cool. It's a shame that this wasn't that big of a success in arcades and that not many people know about it. Cause it's a really it's a really neat game and I think more people should have the chance to play it if they ever get the chance. thing that really fascinates me is old news reports about video games like there was this one news report for the chicago pm magazine from 1981 and it was all about uh the uh the pac-man fever that was spurring around in america in the early 80s from the success of pac-man well for those who don't know pac-man while it was made by namco in japan the game was originally Namco America licensed the game off to be sold by Midway in America. And well, Midway was station Midway um, was a company founded in Chicago, <coughs> Chicago, Illinois, so that's where the game first ended up when it came out. And well, that's where they got it first and well it was as popular as ever there when it hit there. So, the Chicago PM Magazine did a news report on the success of Pac-Man. Oh look, they're uh, embracing each other. I saved the maiden. Nice. So anyway, like, PM Magazine did this coverage of the Pac-Man craze, and it was called Pac-Mania Invades Chicago. And well, basically what they did is like, they talked about a bunch of uh, stuff like they interviewed like the people from Midway like the president or, or, like uh, Stan Jaraki who was like one of the main guys at Midway some uh, some assembly line workers at the at the Midway plant that were assigned with testing the game to make sure that it runs correctly also they also interviewed a bunch of people who bunch of people who played the game and well they like they talked about why pac-man is better than most other games and like their, their top scores and stuff it's a it's a really good news report and you guys should see it if you love pac-man like me. honestly another another really good report is the one that uh, 2020 did in 1988 when Super Mario Brothers 2 came out in North America. Uh, John Stossel, you, you, I'm pretty sure you know about him, famous news reporter. Like John Stossel, like he was uh, asked by the director of 2020 to get his son a copy of Super Mario Brothers 2, so he did his report about Nintendo about stuff. I mean. Uh, Nintendo and stuff, and, uh, well, it's just an amazing report that talks about the craze of Nintendo that swept America, and not only that, but it even touched upon the success of the Famicom in Japan, and they even mentioned the infamous, uh, launch of Dragon Quest III, where there were people who were lined up in front of stores with, fr in long lines, waiting to get the game because Dragon Quest was so popular in Japan back in the day. I mean, it still is now, but, like... You might, if you're a Dragon Quest fan, you, you, you pretty much know, I'm pretty sure you know about the infamous 
the launch of Dragon Quest 3. I mean, I'm not a Dragon Quest fan, but I know about the uh, the launch of Dragon Quest 3 because they mentioned it in that Nintendo news report. That that and if you guys want to find it on YouTube, it's called Nuts for Nintendo. Uh, Chatronic actually did a really fantastic video. Um, he, he did a fantastic reaction video of it. It's really funny, and, uh, you guys should check that out if you get the chance. I love the way he holds the gun. It's like gangster or something. Sorry if I'm sounding like a cornball. That's the way I roll. Shoot the vulture. It, it's very similar to the the the, the, the uh, mothership in Space Invaders. Like I said, this has a very Space Invaders ish aesthetic, especially with the vultures that come out to play. The Nintendo 70s arcade games in general, they were very basic and very primitive, but they have a very good charm that really makes them stand out. And, uh, honestly, uh, yeah, they're pretty cool, especially this one. Well, I, I guess that's enough Sheriff. Well, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that, because I know I did. Sheriff is a very fun game, and if you're ever able to find a machine out in the wild, I don't know how you would, but... Hey, there are people out there willing to do anything. Or if you want to get the game on MAME like I did, because I'm a cheap bastard, you you, you got to check this game out. It's fantastic. It's underrated. And a true Nintendo hidden gem. And you may even recognize that little sheriff dude from uh, as one of the spirits in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Fantastic game. All I got to say is... I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Andrew Plays. Um, I'm sorry I haven't posted any normal videos in a while. I've been posting just random stuff like this, and and like you're probably wondering, uh, my my latest YouTube poop that I'm working on. I actually started working on a YouTube poop earlier this March, but my computer started screwing with me again. Not not like what hap not like what what happened back in August of last year when it just stopped working, but this time it's just the the screen just keeps going black even though the computer still runs in the background. But I'm working as hard as I can to remedy that so I can get back to working on the YouTube poop that I started back earlier this March, and hopefully I'll be able to finish it by the end of March and have it up before April. So. uh yeah, and especially since I have a lot more time because of the quarantining, hap the self-quarantining happening from the coronavirus. So, yeah, everyone stay safe, practice proper hygiene. This is Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.